Hello, my name is Samuel George London and welcome to Comics for the Apocalypse. On today's episode, I speak to comics editor and creator of the hashtag Signal Boost Sunday, Heather Antos, about what comics she would take into the apocalypse. But before we get into it, I'd like to give a shout out to the Little Heroes Comics charity anthology currently running on Kickstarter. If you haven't heard of Little Heroes Comics before, they're a UK-based charity who provide comic-making kits for children with long-term illnesses in hospitals. If you'd like to help them get more kits out to more kids, then please back their anthology by searching Little Heroes in Kickstarter or clicking the link in the show notes. Also, if you do enjoy the show today, please leave a review for us on iTunes or whichever podcast service you use, as not only will it let me know that you liked it, but it, I believe that it helps others aware of the show as well. Now, without further ado, on with the show. Hello, Heather Antos. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thanks. It's uh, It's been a busy day for me. Lots of uh, family things, um, but uh, it's been a good one. Um, how about good. yourself? Uh, busy day for me too. Uh, lots of podcasts. So yeah, podcasting galore, <laughs> um, yeah. and that's that's really kind of in in, in the run up uh, to a comic con, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just uh, getting a bunch of podcasts knocked out of the way, and then. Um, this week I'm going to Emerald City, so awesome. it came it came too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did. Well, this this year's flying by. It is. Sure. Um, and uh, before we kind of get into all those ins and outs, um, I just like to ask my guests for for anybody that hasn't heard of you before, uh, what do you do in the world of comics? Yeah, so I am a comic editor, um, most known for my time at Marvel, where I worked on Star Wars, Deadpool, and co-created Gwenpool. Um, but since then, I worked with Image Comics on things like Injection, um, Redlands, Bitterroot, um, a couple unannounced things there. And most recently, I joined Valiant Comics, um, where I am editing the Livewire series um, and a huge list of unannounced stuff that will be announced very shortly <laughs> so many yes. um, and, uh, I, I was uh, I just listened um, I think it was by on Tuesday that I listened to your interview with the guys over at the awesome comics podcast um, oh, yeah, yeah. and that was an amazing conversation that you had with them kind of going into all the details um, about kind of you know how you got into comics editing and comics itself uh, and also kind of your um, what you're doing right now and what it kind of involves amazing so thank you very much thank for sharing you. all of that yeah really thank you for listening <laughs> yeah, that's quite all right um yeah i mean they, they, those guys go for like ages like <laughs> it's absolutely amazing uh the the level of detail that those guys go for uh but in terms of uh, today's podcast uh thank you for being on comics for the apocalypse um, I mean... and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to finding out about about your comic choices I mean, we have to prepare. Yeah, too, right? I mean, you can never be more prepared uh, than in these times right now. Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. we're, we're heading for it. It's going to happen. We're in Biff Tanner's universe. I mean, it's coming. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and before we do get into uh, your, your specific apocalypse situation, um, where can people find you? Uh, the easiest way to find me is via Twitter. Um, I believe that's where you found me. <laughs> that's right. Um, but uh, yeah, Twitter at Heather Antos, uh, same handle at Instagram. And then my website is just heatherantos.com. Amazing. Uh, cool. And uh, people can find those in the show notes and just click straight through uh, if you just want to do that. Um, but uh, aside from that, I do unfortunately have some bad news for you, Heather. Oh, no. Um, because uh, we've just had some breaking news through and there's actually been an alien invasion. Um, Crap. Do we know what kind? Scrolls? Yeah. What's the... Uh, uh... um, no, not, not so kind of... Um, stealthy <laughs> <It's the laughs> scrolls. It's it's kind of more Mars Attack style, really. To oh, be honest, damn. Okay. Um, although they were quite stealthy at the start, weren't they? Um, but but we're we're going for Mars attacks when they go all out genocidal, basically. <laughs> um, so uh, my first question for you is: What is your action plan for survival? 
Uh, well, I mean, I live in Metro New York, so I've just kind of accepted the fact that if any apocalypse situation ever happens, I'm going to be the first to go. <laughs> uh, I've kind of just accepted my fate. Um, I'm not going to fight it. Uh, I'm just going to enjoy what I can. Probably just Netflix and chill um, yep. until the time <laughs> comes. And uh, just, you know, pour myself a drink and have a good night. Just embrace it. You know, yeah. You carry on as it. usual and then... If it's- yeah. If it's my time to go, it's my time to go. Oh, fair play. Um, and uh, as as you are kind of, you know, watching Netflix and, and you've got some wine with you and things like that, you start to reminisce about your comics over the years, the, the, the best comics that you've read over the years. And, and the first question that you ask yourself is, what's the first comic that I remember enjoying? Oh, man. I mean, for me, it's easily, easily going to be tied between... Um, you know, the Sunday paper comic strips that my mm-hmm. brothers and I fought over as a kid. <laughs> uh, you know, Bloom County and Calvin and Hobbes and Peanuts and all of that. But the right. first comic that really got me into comics was uh, Volume 1 of Sandman, um, which, I mean, it's it's one of the best of all time. Yeah, you absolute can't... classic. Yeah, absolute, absolute. And uh, yeah, I gotta, gotta, gotta think about that one. Definitely. And what was it that really kind of drew you into the story? I mean, for me, I think uh, with Sandman, uh, it was my first time really understanding that comics weren't just superheroes Mm. um, and understanding like how smart comics can be. Uh, It was uh, the 24 hour diner um, issue. I think it's issue six of volume one that really, really hooked me um, because you had Neil did such a good job of. Um, building these characters and all of their relationships. And then you have this 24-hour diner sequence and seeing all these different characters, you know, be, be manipulated and possessed and, and to hurting one another. And you don't realize, or the, the characters don't realize how they're all connected because they think they're strangers in that diner. But because you know the outside story, like it breaks your heart to see. And that's mm. it's so smart and so well-crafted. And it's it, it was that comic that really made me understood like how intelligent comics can be yeah. um if done well definitely and if you don't mind me asking how old were you when you kind of first read that i was uh like 17 oh wow cool yeah yeah so fairly fairly early days and um that's amazing uh and do you think that really kind of set your journey into comics uh i mean or? i mean definitely set the tone of the stuff i'm interested in and stories i like to tell um but I, I mean, I like to say I drew comics before I knew what comics were. I've always been interested mm-hmm. in storytelling and drawing and writing. And, um, you know, I grew up with the, the Batman animated series, X-Men animated series, Spider-Man the animated series. Like, I grew up with all of that. So, um, like, comic book themes and ideas have been in my life for as long as I can remember. Um, but it wasn't until I was, you know, my late teens that I truly, truly fell in love with the medium. Um, so it's, I don't know, it's a bit all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, excellent. So the next question uh, that you start to reminisce about is, what's the what's the funniest or the comic that made you laugh out loud the most? Sex Criminals. <laughs> straight up. Uh, straight <laughs> up. Uh, I mean, like, it's, I just, what a weird concept. Uh, where it's the craziest concept. It's the craziest, <laughs> like, I just... Matt Frag, it's because it's a Matt Frag- Fraction and Chip Zdarsky. Like, I just, I don't know if there's any other universe, any other timeline where you could pitch this and be like, yeah, these two people have sex and then commit crimes. Like, <laughs> what? It's so bizarre and so funny and so good. And I... I never want it to end. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, and is, is there any particular moment that kind of uh, grabs you as being, you know, laugh out loud? I mean, for me, it's it's the first issue. It's it's the first moment where like, oh, it, yeah, like because when I picked it up, I just like sex criminals, like what the f- is this? <laughs> uh, and, and but it's, you know, these two creators that I love and adore. And when, you know, that first moment, <clears throat> when they have sex and time stops and then they run like it, that first moment that you realize no this is literally what it is um it just it's just so funny and so ridiculous and, and it, it kind of it makes me think 
it's not as bizarre as, but it almost makes me think of um, Rocky Horror Picture Show. And like when you look at the concept of that, it's like, oh yeah, this transgender alien comes down and it's all about having sex and like crazy <laughs> things. And someone greenlit that. Like so <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. People will love that. Wish they did. Right, exactly. <laughs> and they did, and it's a cult classic, and that's kind of what sex criminals is too. Amazing. Um, and so uh, you, you kind of start to go through the stages of grief, I suppose, um, <laughs> in, in terms of accepting this apocalyptic situation that you're in. Um, and you start to think, oh, so what's the, what's the saddest or most upsetting comic that I've ever read? Oh, man. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, uh, Deadpool, um, Volume 3, yeah. by Brian Posehn, Jerry Duggan. Like, it, that comic, it just... It made me so emotional when I finished that arc, um, because it, it, which is so shocking because it's Deadpool. Um, you know, you, you'd never think yeah, that. He's just a funny guy, right? He's just a funny guy. He's <laughs> fart jokes. You know, like this isn't this isn't supposed to make me cry. This isn't. I'm not supposed to care about this character, and but it is. It's it's truly, truly just a like a traumatizing story of of, you know, how he was tested on and manipulated and now they're trying to do the same thing to other people and he's trying so hard to keep that from happening and while this is going on, you know, he discovers that, oh shit, like, he he had a kid um, and and now he feels responsible and and he genuinely wants to be a good person and he wants to do the right thing and, and life keeps getting in the way from that happening and and it's just he's just constantly getting beat down and, and beat up and, and it's, it's so heartbreaking. It's so, so, so heartbreaking. Definitely. Um, and how long is that? Sorry, that run. Uh, is that, is that a six issue volume? Or? It's a, yeah, it's, it's like a five, it's a five issue arc. Um, it's arc three of Jerry Duggan and Brian Posehn's run, but easily you can just pick it up and read that arc on its own. Yeah. Um, if, if you want it's it's in my opinion it is the best deadpool story oh amazing um and uh do you think that that in particular um story uh kind of inspired you um in your in your career as a as a comics editor at all i mean that run definitely influenced um, how I viewed Deadpool when I when I joined Marvel. Um, mm. It was actually uh, uh, that arc came out probably about a year, a little little less than a year before I joined um, okay, joined Marvel. So um, I I actually sat down with Jordan White, who was the editor of that arc, um, right after it came out, and we talked about it. And um, it definitely framed like, oh my gosh, like this is you know kind of like Sandman. Um, it really caught me off guard of what it's going to accomplish. And, and the same thing with this character. This is a character that everyone thinks is fart jokes and um, violent and you never expect to feel emotional. Um, and so it just, it just continued to prove to me the power of comics and the pro power of good storytelling um, while still staying true to the character. Amazing. Um, and so uh, kind of still going on um, I suppose uh, pessimistic emotions. Uh, you ask yourself. My favorite. My uh, favorite. Oh no! Your uh, your the the scariest or the most horrifying comic that you've read. I live for horror. Horror is my favorite genre. Um, um, oh, absolutely, right, it's, it's your favorite, right? I love it. Um, yeah. And my and it, it, this one was really really hard for me to to narrow down. Um, but I, I decided to go with The Empty Man by Colin Bunn and Vanessa Del Rey because um, it, it's, it's just, it's creepy. Um, there's no better horror writer in the industry today, hands down, than Colin Bunn. Colin Bunn gets horror through and through, and Vanessa Del Rey is the perfect artist to pair for any horror project. She's so, her work is so ethereal and so organic and so, like, spooky. Um, and there's this what it's about is there's this weird disease that no one can quite understand mm. and figure out. And people began like almost worshiping it, um, cult like, and, uh, there's this guy trying to investigate and cure the disease. Um, and, and he's following it and I don't want to give away too much, but it's, it's a very, very like very creepy and a uh, great social commentary for like kind of how 
um, we view religion and and society today, and it's just it's super cool. That is awesome. And who publishes that? Sorry. Uh, that was published hmm. by Oni, I believe. Um, hmm. Boom. Sorry, my bad. It's Boom. Boom pu- published that. Um, and I believe it's getting turned into a TV show. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That's going to be very interesting. Because um, it's it's quite a, a different, a bit of a different take on like a pandemic mm-hmm. apocalypse, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I know for sure. Yeah, it's 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 a very slow, it's a slow burn apocalypse. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, excellent. Um, so um, you're your thought process um, whilst, while still watching Netflix and, and your glass of wine um, <laughs> moves on to uh, what's, what's the most meaningful comic to you? I mean, for me, it, it goes without saying, I mean, Gwenpool, that entire run, but specifically Gwenpool 25. Um, you know, she was my baby. I, I helped yeah. create her and brought her to life and brought her to life by letting her take over my Twitter account and talk to the fans and, um, you know, and, and Gwen truly wouldn't exist without f- the fans making her what she is. I mean, she literally was a variant cover and then people started doing fan art and cosplaying her and to the point where Marvel said people like her make her a character. Um, and so Gwenpool 25 is truly an ode to the fans and their love of her. Um, and the fact that she is going to continue to live on so long as people keep reading comics, um, and that our characters know, even if a character's comic is canceled, um, the character continues to live on because someone is always going to keep reading the issues. And I think that's a very powerful statement to what fandom is. Um, and I think Gwen is truly a symbol of that. Amazing. Um, and kind of how did all of that come about? Um, that kind of initial creation process. Yeah, I mean, like, as I said, we did, uh, Marvel did a, a variant month where uh, every comic got a variant cover of a Gwen Stacy mashup. So X Men got a Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler Gwen Stacy ma- mashup. You know, Spider Man got Spider Gwen. Um, Thor got, you know, Gwen Thor mashup. And so Deadpool got Gwenpool. And. Chris Pachala did this amazing variant cover of Gwenpool lying in a, a, a pool raft, uh, drinking a cool beverage while a dead body that she just killed is floating along next to her. <laughs> and people loved it. People uh, immediately started doing fan art. It started blowing up on social media. A con two weeks later, there were multiple people cosplaying her. Um, and so it was just brought to our attention, like, make her a character people like her and it was super important for jordan and i to we didn't want her to be deadpool and we didn't want her to be gwen stacy we wanted her to be her own thing we wanted her to be special we didn't want her to be a knockoff and um so it was chris hastings like brilliant idea to make her a real comic book fan um from our universe and just woke up in the Marvel universe. And it's kind of like a, what would you do if situation? That's, that's what her story is. And so it's all an exploration of fandom um, from the beginning, from her inception. And, and that's what I think makes her so powerful and so, so unique. Awesome. And, and to this day, do you, do you still get a say in kind of what happens to Gwenpool? I don't really get a say, but like, I'm really good friends with Kelly Thompson, who's currently writing her in West coast Avengers. So occasionally like she'll, you know, she'll just like run things by me, um, to, to give me like kind of what she's thinking of. What do I think of that? Of course I have no power over it anymore. Um, and I don't want to have power over it. I, I want her to continue to evolve and continue to, um, grow as new creators take her on. But it is, it, 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 it's, it's just I, there's no feeling like it to see something you know that you had a hand on grow to be as big as she has. Amazing, yeah. Obviously, that's that's why it's incredibly meaningful to you, and that's uh, that's something that you'll be proud of forever, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, hands down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so uh, moving on um, from from that very proud moment, um, you ask yourself, what's the most underrated comic? Oh man, I mean. 
I I say uh, One Soul by Ray Fox. Um, it's not your it's not your typical comic book. It's not a superhero. It's not a single floppy issue. It's it's more of a more of a graphic novel, but it, I'd say it's a bit smaller than that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's again it's a testament to what you can do in comics um, that I don't think people always realize what you can do with the medium. And the entire thing is a double page is double page spreads um, of 18 panels. And each panel focuses on um, the life of one individual character throughout history. And so you'll have 18 so it's so it's eighteen different characters. Some are in the Middle Ages, some are in the Dark Ages, some are now, some are in China, some are in Africa, some are in you know Canada, um, and it goes throughout the stages of their life. And uh, it just kind of shows that no matter who you are, no matter your background, no matter where you come from, we're all just people, and we all feel the same things, and we all want to be loved, and we all want to experience love, and we all want family and we all want to belong and it's, it's truly moving and powerful and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, that, that I think everyone should read. Awesome. And, and do you remember who publishes that? That one I know is Oni. <laughs> Oni, that one is Oni. Great. That one is Oni. I'm looking at it right now on my shelf. <laughs> Perfect. I um, mean, sorry, what's, what's the setting for that? Just for the, for the listeners. Uh, again, it's all double page spreads of, right of eight you know 18 panels and so there is no single setting it's 18 different settings um oh, and yeah. so you can read you can read this comic any way you want to you can read it cuz uh so the first panel on every single page is is the same character um and then panel 2 is the same character on every single page panel 3 etc cetera, etc cetera. and so you can read it that first panel all the way through or you can read it panels 1 through 18 all the way through or you can read it you know, vertically or horizontally or diagonally, yeah. Uh, yeah. and and it's the same. It, it, it's it's the same story, but it's you get different perspectives that way. It's it's wow, it's really almost smart. it's almost like a mashup of like poetry and comics in a weird way. Yeah, definitely. Wow, uh, definitely going to check that one out for sure. Um, and so then we come on to one of the most difficult questions um, that, that you have to ask yourself just before the aliens um, basically uh, explode <laughs> New York. Um, for you, what's the best comic of all time? Oh, my gosh. Well, I see. And I can't even answer this. Uh, but I, yeah. I, I gave three answers. I Batman 5, Silver Surfer 11, Gwynpool 17. Um, you know, each of these issues uh like you know like one soul and like one pull 25 and like um like sandman they they kind of explore the power of of what the comics medium is um and there's stories that can be only 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 be done in a comic issue um silver surfer 11 is this weird trippy thing where the comic you can read an infinite amount of times you you it's it's told horizontally one way and you get to the last page and then you flip it and you read it horizontally upside down and then you have to go back and redo it and uh, until you get out of the loop and it's a really trippy experience batman Mm. 5 is almost the same thing where batman's kind of losing his mind because of the court of the owls and so you're literally spinning the comic as you read it and in order to accomplish something like that is a true, true testament to the editorial team and a true, true testament to Greg Capullo, who drew that issue of the ability to do so in a way where the reader isn't tripping over themselves and the reader knows what to do um, without, like, being confused. And then Gwenpool 17, um, yes, I am a little biased on this one, (laughs) but again, uh, that's the issue where Gwen becomes self-aware that no, she knows 100% for a fact that she is in a comic book. And so because she knows how comic books works, what are the abilities that she can do? Oh, she can hop between panels. She knows that thought bubbles exist. And so she's going to play with that. She knows that sound effects exist. So she's going to play with that. And how can she manipulate that to her advantage? Um, and it's super, super meta. And there's there's a fine line between, you know, making things meta and being cheesy um, and also like using them for, for like true storytelling potential. And I think we really succeeded with that with Gwenpool 17. And, um, but again, each of these issues, 
sure you could make them a television episode or a movie or whatever, but they wouldn't be the same because mm. each of them revolve around the fact that they are in a comic book. And so they use the fact that they're in a comic book to their storytelling advantage. Excellent. That's why they're all the, uh, the best comics of all time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, excellent um so uh then um the the last questions in terms of your uh your comic choices are that so the, the the aliens are now kind of hovering above your uh your house or, or your apartment building very rude <laughs> um, yeah, I know it's it's outrageous, and the, and they're going to be pressing the uh, the independent style um, beam button <laughs> basically um, on the on, onto your uh, your domicile, and um, you have about twenty minutes left, and you have to choose one last comic to read, um, and so from that list, uh, which one comic uh, do you read? Oh, I'm going to read Gwenpool, Gwenpool 25, hands down. Amazing. Hands down. It's the most meaningful. How could you not? Yeah, totally. Um, and that kind of like sums up um, everything in your, in, in your career thus far, do you think? Yep. I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and then, uh, so we've we've kind of uh, stumped this uh, our very last question a little bit with with your uh, with your. No, I got an answer that'll satisfy oh, you. Fantastic. So uh, the question for for new listeners is uh, with your apocalypse situation in mind, which is an alien invasion. Uh, what weapon, tool, or useful item would you like to take into the apocalypse? Well, I don't know if you're aware, Sam, but uh, I, uh, the fans have been debating for years and years whether or not I am, in fact, Gwenpool. Awesome. Um, and, you know, being uh, Gwenpool would know that she's in an alien invasion and she would know that alien invasions don't happen in real life. Mm -hmm. um, so she would simply just hop out of the issue that she's in, wait till it passes and then go into the next one. Nice. Just step side up. Yep. Perfect. So you're going to be able to uh, just chill out watching Netflix, and then they'll you'll step side, and then they'll kind of explode your apartment building, and then uh, yeah, then just step right back in. Yeah, I'll just I'll just wait and let the uh, let the Avengers take care of it, and uh, then come back in. Wait for it to all blow over. Yeah, amazing, super. That's a that's a good weapon. Um, <laughs> I wish I had that in real life. Uh, just with particular situations, just be able to step side right out of it and then come back when it's all sorted out. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, Heather Antos, thank you so much um, for sharing your uh, your choices for the, uh, the the apocalypse. Oh, of um, course. It's been it's been a real pleasure finding out uh, more about kind of you as a um, as a comic book reader as well as um, as a comics professional. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was super fun. I'm glad we survived together. Uh, yes. I think we came out stronger because of it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, for one last time, uh, where, where can people find you? Uh, again, Twitter is the easiest way, at Heather Antos. Excellent. And then um, what things do you have coming up that you're allowed to talk about? Yeah, so I am at Emerald City this week um, where we'll be doing some pretty big announcements revolving around some uh, fan favorite characters in the Valiant universe. Um, but uh, I, uh, until then, uh, keep reading Livewire. Um, Bitterroot 5 is going to be coming uh, to shops this week, I believe, as well as Redlands 12 is going to be coming out in a couple weeks. Um, so check those out fantastic uh, well thanks again for your time today heather it's been a real pleasure uh speaking to you and uh yeah thankfully our uh, our calendars lined up eventually yeah. um it was <laughs> it was uh um on the edge there for a minute but we uh we, we made it in the end so thanks very much <laughs> thank you perfect all right have a good day you too bye bye thanks again to heather for being on comics for the apocalypse it was an absolute pleasure if you enjoyed the show today, please leave a review for us on iTunes or whichever podcast service you use, as not only will it let me know that I've done a good job, but I believe that it helps others aware of the show as well. And if you'd like to check out Heather's work or follow her on social media, those links are in the show notes, along with all of our own links to the various areas of the internet. And finally, as long as the apocalypse doesn't come to pass in the next week, I'll see you next Monday. Bye for now.